Hey guys, Elizabeth Honey here. Um, this is the last video of 2022. Um, I always do these kind of videos, um, like a little vlog sort of thing. I don't know what you'd call this. It's not really a vlog. It's just a kind of a sit down video where I talk about shit that happened in 2022. Um, I did one last year and I've done them for quite a few years. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would do one this year. It is the last day of 2022. It is the 31st of December. Um, it's 11.05. I've literally just woken up. Um, well, I've been, I've been awake for about half an hour, um, but I've not had a coffee. I've not even got out of bed yet, hence the mess of hair. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of sit down and just do a little chat session because I, I like to kind of... I explain to you what happened in 2022 or explain what's going to happen next year or not explain why I haven't been around so much um obviously 2022 wasn't a great year for me anyway um <clears throat> I started 2022 as a single parent um I'd split up from my husband um the previous year and it wasn't great I'm um, not gonna lie, um, warning, I may cry in this video, I cry in all of these videos, um, but I am human, so get over it. Um, but yeah, I started the new year as a single parent of three children, three very small children, um, not something I expected to ever do, but I got on with it. Um, February brought me my 28th birthday, um, nothing really happened something was really exciting um for the first like half of the year um I kind of just went a bit uh stale because I was kind of trying to work out how to do everything um I tried to do YouTube I tried to do my sex work I tried to um do streaming as well as look after three small children by myself. Um, and it was hard. It was really hard. I never really got time to myself to be able to sit down and just do what I wanted. <coughs> My ex-husband would have the kids sort of every other weekend um, to try and give me space. Um, but it didn't always work. He was either working or busy with his own life and all that kind of thing. So it wasn't always like a fit schedule um, at the beginning. And it was really hard for me to sort of work around the kids. And I tried to do as much as I could in two days that I had by myself. So Mondays and Wednesdays, all three kids are at like school and nursery. So I had those two days to fit absolutely everything I could. I would do as many YouTube videos as I could. I would shoot as much content as I could for like OnlyFans and stuff. I would stream as much as I could. And I just, I got so run down and so burnt out doing everything all at once that I just started hating doing everything. <laughs> um, I love doing YouTube and I love streaming because it gives me a sense of sort of like splitting off from my reality. But then I got to a point where it wasn't doing that for me anymore. And I just got to the point of like, I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it. And I didn't want to ever be like that with YouTube and streaming and all that kind of thing. Like, I didn't want to hate it. And I wanted to do it because I enjoyed doing it. But I did get to that point where I was like, I'm just doing this because people have told me to. And I don't want to be like that. The content just started getting stale. This content just started being really shit. And like I said, I was just doing it for the fact that I needed to do it um, to keep people happy. And then I forgot about my own happiness. I did stop doing YouTube and I did stop streaming for a long time. And then I tried to bring it back um, when I felt it was right to bring it back. I tried to stream as much as I could but still be happy with it um and I've got to that point again where I'm I'm done with streaming I'm done with Twitch and YouTube live streaming um in the terms of like playing games and stuff like that it's just not for me 
um I enjoy doing it as a like a hobby and I enjoy um just I enjoy just playing games but I just don't have the time to sit down and play a game for a couple of hours in front of like a live audience um and try and be funny and try and be I don't know something that I'm not I suppose I enjoy playing games and I am, I enjoy the live streaming but it's just it's not something for me anymore. I thought it was, it's not. So from like next year, you won't see me live streaming on Twitch or anything like that, unless I just do a one-off. Um, but honestly, to do streaming as a full-time job, you have to be in it and you have to like kind of not do anything else. Um, there's a lot of good streamers out there that do full-time streaming who have, have no other job and that's great for them um but I enjoy all my other jobs that I have and I can't kind of keep stretching myself out over six different jobs I kind of need to concentrate on one and do that one and be good at that one um I don't want to be a jack of all trades anymore is basically what I'm saying so for the new year um my di direction of what I'm going to be doing is content creating on the scale of OnlyFans and Patreon. They're the two sites that I'm going to be concentrating on more. Um, and obviously YouTube is my, um, I would say promotional platform. It's the one that kind of gets me the most views. Um, I've got 225,000 subscribers. Um, so it would be silly for me to stop YouTube. I love doing YouTube, but it's going to be on a case of I will do YouTube as and when I can. Um, it's not going to be an everyday thing. Um, I just can't afford to keep buying stuff. And I know everybody keeps saying, like, oh, it doesn't matter. You can um, just wear the same things. But there's only so many times I can wear the same things in videos and people still start like to watch because the whole point of my YouTube video isn't just to wear lingerie. If you want to see me do that, go to my Patreon, go to my OnlyFans. Um, the point of YouTube is to show other sex workers and other models the new the new stuff that's out on certain websites. Um, it's about reviewing stuff for um, companies and whatnot. But since COVID, a lot of companies have stopped working with a lot of content creators unless you're in the millions, which I understand why. Um, they've had so long without making money and they can't afford to like pay the little guy, I suppose. Um, I am still a little YouTube channel um, in terms of what I do. So I don't get as many popular brands wanting to work with me anymore. I have done quite a few um, in my time and I suppose it, they need to do it with company, with their, with YouTubers that are actually bringing back the money. Um, I'm obviously not bringing in enough money for companies to kind of want to carry on working with me, which I can totally understand. Um, that's totally fine. So a lot of my YouTube videos over the last few months have just been out of my own pocket and I can't afford to keep doing that if um, I'm not getting the money back sort of thing. So every video is roughly 150 to 200 pounds worth of laundry. Um, I do shop in the cheapest of shops I can, which is Shein. A lot of my YouTube hauls have been Shein because it's the cheapest out there. If I was shopping in somewhere like Ann Summers, it would be five to eight hundred pounds per video. And I just cannot do that. Um, I'd love to be able to do that, but that's like a monthly wage for me at the minute. Um, I am not making as much money as I used to. Um, I lost a big chunk of my job this year. Um with the Extreme Playpen My Naughty Selfies websites shutting down. <coughs> um, I not only lost my model wage of around £1,000 a month, I also lost um, a big chunk um, because I used to work for them as admin and I would get around £600 a month extra on top of that for doing admin work for them. With them sites shutting down, that's a massive chunk of my money that I've lost. Um, therefore I have had to try and get that elsewhere and it just hasn't happened yet. 
I reopened my Patreon at the end of this year. Um, I'm really excited to see what 2023 will bring for that. I have some really big ideas that I want to do for Patreon and it's not going to just be sort of um, lingerie hauls and stuff. It will be like a mix of photo shoots and videos, um, it'll be a mix of uncensored YouTube hauls, all that kind of thing, like I was doing beforehand. But I have a really good photographer that I'm going to be working with throughout the whole of next year um, to create some really good content that will continuously go out. Um, so I will always have something to do. And potentially next year I will be doing a 2024 calendar. Um, that's if I get enough time at the end of the year to get that sorted. <coughs> I do apologise, my voice is going cracky because I've not had any drinks or anything today. <coughs> um, but yeah, 2023, I'm going to really push out um, shooting content and making YouTube hauls and all that kind of thing. But it's going to be sort of... If you want to see the good stuff, you need to subscri subscribe to either my OnlyFans or my Patreon. My OnlyFans is fourteen ninety nine a month. And that's because I do um, explicit content over there. I shoot with my boyfriend. Um, as well as the laundry hauls and all that kind of thing. But my Patreon, you can sign up for as little as four ninety nine which will get you laundry hauls um, and I'm hoping to do at least one a week so you'll get at least four videos of that and then um, $8.99 will get you topless photos and stuff like that and then I think the next one is $19.99 you'll get everything um, that's available on the site but you'll also get one piece of merchandise every month as well so you'll get like a t-shirt or a mug, some stickers, um, key rings, signed prints, that kind of thing for the higher for the higher tier. Um, the the first piece of merchandise will go out um, at the end of your subscription. So if you signed up today, um, it will be posted out at the end of January. If that makes sense. Because I have to wait for the um, for the payments to like process and stuff, and then get to my bank, and then I can send out the the goods. Um, but yeah, I'm bringing back Patreon. So if you want to support me, Patreon is the place to go if you're not interested in like sex tapes and stuff. Basically, OnlyFans is where you want to go if you want porn. Um, but yeah, that's kind of um what I wanted to talk about um, in this video. <laughs> Obviously, um, in August, my husband um, did pass away. Um, he took his own life uh, the middle of August. So August and September, and pretty much most of October, I didn't work. I didn't stream, I didn't shoot content, I didn't do YouTube, I did nothing. I literally did nothing. I was in a mess um not only for me but for my kids they just lost their dad who um i'm gonna try not cry um so yeah it's been really really hard over the last few months for me um i've been trying to keep myself alive i've been trying to keep my kids alive and i've been really rock bottom gonna try and not cry um i'm on new medication for my bipolar and my depression i'm on new medication for my chronic pain that i have that is still not diagnosed um i've been suffering with it for 10 years and it's still not fully diagnosed um so yeah i've i've gone through a lot of shit over the last few months um during sort of the end of july i was with somebody um and it was great it was a great relationship, um, from what I thought. Um, and then obviously with what happened with my husband, it kind of put me into a really bad mental spiral. And I think I did portray that onto the partner I was with, um, who suffers with his own mental health and stuff. So that relationship kind of went sour pretty quickly. Um, I went through, um, I went through something pretty big 
and I kind of went through it alone. Um, I was expecting to be happy with this guy. Um, and I found out, um, found out some pretty big news that kind of changed my life. Um, again, <laughs> which I'm not going to fully share in this video, but, um, I will share eventually. But anyways, um, I went through something that I didn't want to go through alone and I ended up going through alone and, um, during that he ended up blocking me on everything he ended up just getting rid of me basically and i didn't even realize we were in a rocky position at that time i thought we were good i thought we were still we were like the nights a couple nights beforehand um we were still sleeping together and stuff i thought we were all good and then he just decided to wake up one day and be like nah gone so again i went through a really really shit time um I was going through some health issues and then he decided just to block me on everything so I couldn't contact him um he owes me a lot of money still as well so that's a bit of a shit situation for me um so yeah I went through like another really shit situation not long after having another like a really shit situation so um it's not been great for me over the last couple of months um but at the end of sort of October, beginning of November, um, I started talking to somebody else. Um, actually a friend of the last boyfriend's, which is really wrong of me, but it happens. Um, we just got talking and he was really sweet and he was there for me when nobody else kind of was. Um, I just want to say, like, the shit situation I had, I, I'm, I wasn't fully alone. I had my mum. Um, I did talk to my mum about it. But it wasn't the same as having the person who was involved, if that makes sense. Like, I wanted him to be there for me and he wasn't. So I had to go to my mum. Just want to clarify that I wasn't fully alone. But I was alone in the sense of, like, I would have wanted my partner with me and not my mum. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, I met somebody new. Um, we just got talking. We were, like, talking all day, every day for the first few weeks. And then we were like, you know what, this is really nice and we both want this, we both need this. Why not let's just get together and see what happens? Um, and we've been together like a month and a bit now and it's going really well. It's really nice. He's lovely. Um, you'll see him like pop up on my socials and stuff if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, he's absolutely lovely. And we've done like the the nice coupley things together um a few weeks ago we went to the cinema together we went and did some shopping um for, like for christmas and whatnot and it was really nice um just to be sort of me and him because when when we're together obviously i've got three kids so it's like me and him and three kids <laughs> so it's kind of hard to just to like have date nights and stuff it's, it's hard to be just me and him so um the kids were away with um, Connor's parents for Christmas, so we went to the cinema and we had we had lots of fun together. Um, so yeah, it's it has really like brought something out in me that I've not seen for a long time. Um, I'm happy and I'm smiling again, which is nice. Obviously, I have my odd days. I have bipolar. I have depression. Um, I have the odd days where I'm like. I don't do anything and I sit in bed and I want to die. I will always have those days. Um, my suicidal thoughts um, did get worse when when Connor died. Um, I went through a lot of stages with that whole situation of like, um, I hated him because he did it first. And I wanted to be the one that did it. I went through a stage of like hating him because he left me and the kids. I went through a stage of being so fucking sad that he was gone. Didn't want to cry in this video. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, you do, you don't know how it feels to lose somebody against suicide unless it's happened to you. People can answer on be like, "Oh, I'm sorry for your loss," and all this kind of thing. But it's like it's easier to lose somebody when they die of something like cancer or just old age. You know, I lost my granddad a few years ago to cancer. Um, and obviously that was sad and it's still sad now, but it was easier to kind of grieve and get used to because he was ill for a while and we kind of got used to knowing he was going to die. Um, when it's something so quick like suicide, you don't have that before grieving process. It just happened. I woke up one morning and he was dead. Um, so it's really hard to kind of still come to terms with the fact he's gone. Um, but it's something that I am slowly getting used to, I suppose. Um, <laughs> I'm still going to have those days of like, shit, he's gone. <laughs> And I'm still going to have those days of the kids asking me questions about it. And I've been completely honest with the kids. The kids know what happened. Um, apart from my youngest, he doesn't really understand. He just knows daddy's in heaven. Um, but I know I'm going to have to get to those days when they're like, even older. And they're asking the more important questions. And I'm going to have to answer them all. And it's going to get to the point of, like, their birthdays. It's like, next year is going to be their first birthdays without him. This was the first Christmas without him. Um, those days are hard. Um, and obviously, like, when my kids are old enough and my girls get married, it will be me that walks them down the aisle. And that really breaks my heart. Because I'm a very traditional person and my dad walked me down the aisle. So, I don't know, to have like, to have those thoughts. Like, their kids will never know their granddad and stuff like that. That's really hard. Like, I, I'm, I might, it might be okay because, like, by the time that all happens, I'll be with my new partner and he'll kind of be their stepdad and stuff, but it's not the same. And I promised myself I wouldn't cry in this video, and I know I would. <laughs> but I just kind of want to, wanted to explain to you guys why I've been so distance like I've not I've not posted anything really um I've tried my hardest to post out videos and I've tried my hardest to be happy and I just can't be I feel guilty when I'm happy I feel I feel guilty that I've got a new boyfriend and I don't know like I'm so conflicted with my own feelings and my own thoughts it's really hard for me to daily function <laughs> I can't explain how it, it feels <sighs> but I feel guilty for so many things and I know that my husband taking his own life wasn't my fault. But I will always think that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's been a really fucking hard year for me. 
and I really do appreciate all the support and um, just like the love that I got when I announced um, about Connor's passing because obviously he was in a lot of my videos um, so a lot of you guys know him as well in the terms of like knowing him online and stuff um, and he was always a happy sort of guy <laughs> he was always silly and I do miss him I miss him a lot <laughs> but I know he wouldn't want me to be like this <laughs> I know he'd want me to be the best I could be and kick ass at doing the stuff I do. <laughs> he was really supportive of my job and of YouTube and of everything else that I did. He was always behind me when I had stupid ideas to make my own websites and he was always there when I went and did photo shoots and stuff. Like, he was always around to help me out with ideas and... Uh, yeah, just having that sort of... Having that sort of presence with me is... It's gone. <laughs> and it's really fucking hard to get used to. But I just want you guys to understand sort of... I'm not done with YouTube. I will never be done with YouTube. And I'm constantly getting people commenting on my stuff saying like, oh, where are the YouTube hauls? And it's just hard. <laughs> it's hard to keep on top of everything when the world's crushing down around you. And I don't have just my own world to think about. I've got to think about my three kids as well. My eldest daughter has gone through so much and her mental health as a nine-year-old is fucking shit. And me as a mother, I need to to let her know that it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. <laughs> but we we do sit and we do like remember all the good stuff about him and all the good times we had together. Like, I'm so glad last year we were able to go on a big family holiday together. Um, we went pumpkin picking and stuff like that. Like, little things that will always now stick in our minds and will always be there. Obviously, I remember our wedding day and all that kind of thing. I always remember the good times. Yes, there were bad times, but I'm so happy he was in my life. And I'm so happy I met him. I'm gonna stop crying, I promise. <laughs> but I'm just glad that I have found somebody that could understand all of this. And he doesn't get, like, jealous of the fact that I still love my ex-husband. <laughs> um... And I still share things about him as well. Like on social media when you get like the this is what you did this time last year kind of thing. Like a lot of my stuff obviously involves Connor. So we were together for eight years. Um, so yeah, it's it's nice to have somebody who loves me for me despite all the shit that I come with. <laughs> Like, I have so much baggage, it's unreal. I could open my own airline. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. I've been sat here for half an hour crying. Um, I I just want to say that next year, I am going to do the whole new year, new me situation. Because it, it's going to be sort of um, the same me, obviously. 
I'm not going to change me. I've changed my hair. I hope you like my hair. <laughs> it's going to be the same me, but it's going to be me in a different light. I'm going to still be creating content. I'm still going to be doing YouTube. I'm still going to be doing everything that I love doing, but I'm going to concentrate on one part and not try and split myself up into six different people because it's just not working for me. It hasn't worked for the last couple of years now and I really need to start just concentrating on being good at one thing and not trying to be good at loads of different things. I want to be amazing at one thing and that is the content creating in terms of obviously my sex work because that's my job and that's my income um but then it's going to be sort of my youtube um creating content for youtube in a different kind of way as before but i hope you guys are going to enjoy what i'm going to do my first video um of 2023 will be a lingerie video but it will be an organisation video and it will be going through pretty much eight years worth of lingerie. <laughs> so I'm hoping you're ready for that video. Um, this bed that I'm sat on, when you lift it up, it's full of lingerie and clothes and stuff. So I'm going to be opening my bed to you guys. <laughs> and we're going to just go through the whole lot. I'll try some of it on see if it still fits um and then we're gonna get rid of it and we're gonna start again we're gonna start fresh so we're gonna do an organization video that's gonna be my first video and then we'll see what happens um with the rest of the stuff but i'm gonna be concentrating on patreon again because i miss doing patreon there will be photo shoots, there will be uncensored lingerie hauls. Um, so anything you see in 2023 on YouTube, you can find the uncensored version on Patreon. And obviously I will be concentrating on my OnlyFans still because that's where the money is, that's where it brings my income in. Um, and if you haven't already, please follow me on TikTok. I have started a TikTok account, I know. I'm old and I'm on TikTok. Um, but I really appreciate if you'd go and follow me over there as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this video, guys. <laughs> I've rambled on for 30 minutes. Um, but I just wanted to explain where I've been and what's going to happen next. Because I, I do this every year, like I said at the beginning of the video. I've done one of these every year. And eventually I want to watch them all back and be like... Did I actually do the things that I said I was going to do? Um, or did I do something completely different? And I think most of them have been pretty similar, to be honest. A lot of them I have said, like, I'm going to concentrate on something and then I never do. <laughs> so this year, I really do want to just concentrate on, like, one part of my work, which is sort of, um, I'll buy lingerie, I'll make a video for YouTube, I'll then make a spicier video for Patreon and then I'll make a spicier video for OnlyFans. That's that's my goal because then it all sort of runs into one thing but I can use that one piece of laundry three times because I can do a laundry video of you of me like just showing you guys where it came from, how it fits, blah blah blah. Then on Patreon I can do a uncensored version and then on OnlyFans I can do a more spicier version um so i'm getting like three uses out of one piece of laundry <laughs> but that's my plan anyway guys um i won't see any of you before 2023 because it's in literally like a few hours <laughs> so i hope everybody has a great new year um and I hope to God it's not as bad as 2022 because I cannot cope with anything worse than what I went through in 2022, honestly. Um, yeah. Um, drop 
in the comments down below what kind of thing you guys want to see for YouTube in 2023. I know everyone's going to be like, I just want to see lingerie or mini bikinis, all that kind of thing. Micro bikinis will happen in the summer. It is really hard to find nice micro bikinis during the winter. So please stop asking me for micro bikinis. <laughs> They will happen in the summer, I promise. Um, transparent clothing and stuff like that cannot happen on YouTube because I will lose my account. And I don't want to lose my account. If you want to see transparent lingerie, see-through, uh, fishnetty kind of stuff, go to my Patreon. It is only four ninety nine a month to sign up to my Patreon and you can see whatever you like. Transparent, micro bikinis all that kind of thing that I can't show on YouTube. YouTube is only for lingerie that I can wear and not get banned. Because if I get banned, that's it. It's gone. <laughs> and I'll be so unhappy if I get my man uh, my account banned. Um, but yeah, um, let me know down below if there's anything in particular you want to see. Any companies in particular, um, any type of clothing in particular. I want to branch from just lingerie and I want to do more than just Shein because <laughs> I'm sick of just doing Shein clothing um yes it's the cheapest but I want to do something different I want to go back to how I used to do it and I used to have like a different company every week um I do have a love sense um review coming which will be exciting um because it's a pretty big review um but yeah that's it for this video guys i will shut up now i hope everybody has a beautiful start to the 2023 and and i will see you next year bye